again, me and Edge and Christian, Adam and Jay, we, we watched as little kids growing up. We literally kind of our first dose of wrestling psychology was just taking those little rubber LJNs, which you can see me nerding out in the back, like I have those little toys in the back. Yeah. Those things are probably twice as old as you are. And so we would write cards and we wouldn't, we wouldn't be thinking in wrestling terms, but we would like write cards for these guys and we would put over guys that we wouldn't maybe necessarily enjoy in real life, but maybe they just had a cooler pose in the toy so they'd get the push and so yeah. forth. Like how can Jake the Snake DDT anybody pose like this? <laughs> exactly. So Jake always got job for that stuff, but we would, you know, <laughs> we would play with those toys. And, and again, when I would get to, get the, the note to get on the right bus to go to the right friend's house for an evening. And we maybe we'll watch Saturday, like uh, Saturday night's main event and try to stay up and keep our little kid eyes open long enough to watch. Cause it would air at like 11, 11 30 PM. It would sort of take place. It would sort of, uh, it would job out Saturday nights, uh, Saturday night live once a month and we would see it. And I remember literally watching and seeing Jake, the snake DDT, Ricky steamboat on the concrete. I remember edge and Christian going, Oh my God, Ricky steamboat. Oh no. Oh, Ricky. <laughs> and I just remember thinking, uh, okay. I like Ricky steamboat just fine, but I'd rather be that dude looming over a steamboat sneering than Ricky steamboat twitching on the concrete. Yeah. So it just, it just was a silly, slow, weird, introverted path to being a creative lunatic, I guess. And, and uh, I'll, I'll cap off this story by just saying I was this really shy little kid and like, not unlike somebody quitting smoking cold Turkey. I just, I was so shy and so trepidatious and I just decided that's not going to do me any, any good. I literally put that, that down cold Turkey. I'm just like, I'm not going to be shy. I'm not going to be embarrassed of myself. I'm not going to be scared. That's no way to live. And if people like it, great. If they don't like it. Yeah. Right. I, yeah, that's really inspiring because I know so many people who, who would love to be able to have that ability, you know what I mean, to put that down. And I maybe everyone does, right, somewhere deep inside, but it's great that you were able to do that. It really is. Well, I, can I can tell you this. What, what I tell a lot of wrestling students is when they say, I'm so nervous to go out there in front of people and wear some silly costume and, and just, just being in front of humans. You know, humans do not like being in front of other humans. Yeah. It is people's number one fear, public speaking. Mm hmm people's number two fear is dying. So think about that. So over the, and playing the odds, it's not every single person that's just, but it's, it's painting with a wide brush, not an all encompassing brush. But for the most part, you're telling me that people are more scared of speaking in front of other earthlings. who are probably just as scared as they are, as opposed to croaking. How does that make any sense? It so it's amazing. The things that we have control over versus the things we do not have control over. I'd say put as much on your side of that fence as possible. Growing up with Edge and Christian, like you mentioned, such creative brains and, and yourself, of course, I'd love to hear about um, some early gimmicks or character ideas that you had. Do you remember any that you uh, ever played around with before getting into wrestling that maybe never made it to the spotlight? Sure. Um, one of our silly like high school names, I actually gave Edge. Um, so his, his first... His first actual wrestling name was Adam Impact. Adam Impact? I'm like, okay. Adam Impact. I'm like, that's terrible. I was literally at Monarch, <laughs> Monarch Park for his very first match on Canada Day once upon a time in the 90s. I can tell you uh, when exactly it was. But I was there, and I remember watching him getting just crunched by some big dude and just worried for my buddy. You know, like, I mean, yeah. I'm as close to him as my own flesh and blood brother. You know, like, he is my brother. I'd take the bullet for him. And uh, there's, a, there's a half a handful of humans I could really say that about on the planet. He's definitely one of them. And so I just remember thinking, that's a, just a terrible name. And he's so creative and so talented. And I somehow, I don't remember how exactly I came up with it, but I'm like, what about Sexton Hardcastle? <laughs> so that's what he ended up wrestling with until he got signed and they turned him into Edge. Um, well, that was him that I thought of. Um, yeah, yeah. So many silly, stupid names. Um, right. Me and Christian, we would stay up and play like Mike Tyson's Punch Out and the Buster Douglas game. I can't remember what it was called, just archaic video games. You go back mm -hmm. in the day, stage when the wheels were still square and so forth. Yeah. And uh, we had all sorts of ridiculous, stupid names. Uh, I think I had one one character. I was Zulu Candy for a, a minute. Uh, there was all sorts of ridiculous things. We had all sorts. Ooh, messy daddy, Boogie woogie man, feel good. I tell my people, my brothers and sisters, don't you dare, don't you dare miss online. Rewind, recap, relive. Oh yeah.